Uh, it's great to see everybody back. Uh, I'd like to recognize some of the elected officials who are joining us today. Uh, Governor Jay Nixon of Missouri, a good friend of, of uh, Boeing, certainly, and many in this room. Thank you for, for being here. Um, we look forward to hearing from you later in the program. Uh, three new members of the PEC who are members of Congress. Uh, we'd like to welcome Representative Mike Kelly of Pennsylvania. Mr. Congressman, good to have you here. Uh, thank you for your service and welcome to the PEC. Uh, Representative Dan Kildee of Michigan. Is he, there he is, welcome. Good to have you here. And Susan Delbaney of Washington is also here, I believe. There she is, welcome. And uh, Congressman Reichert, I, is he with us? I mean, the longest, the lo yeah, okay, I was, I was gonna recognize him as the, as the longest continuous attending <laughs> member of the legislature. <laughs> and don't tell him I said anything. I'll recognize him later. Uh, Mayor Ashley Swearingen of Fresno, California. Welcome, good to have you here, uh, representing the U.S. Conference of, of Mayors. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, a number of the President's top advisors and member, member of his, members of his cabinet are also here. I'd like to welcome, of course, Valerie Jarrett, Senior Advisor of the President. Valerie, as always, uh, Jeff Zients. Jeff is over here, a Director of the National Economic Council. Uh, Maurice, Maurice Ost, I, I can't, pronounce your name as well as I should. Thank you very much. I, pre I appreciate your forbearance on that one. Uh, of the Council of Economic Advisors, uh, Secretary Penny Pritzker, uh, our sponsor, our leader. Uh, Secretary uh, Anthony Fox of the Transportation Department is here. And I think I saw Tom, yeah, Secretary Perez is, is, is also here. Uh, it's great to have him. Ambassador Mike Froman is with us as well and Ambassador Maria Contreras-Sweet of the Small Business Administration is here. So, Maria, good to see you again. Uh, and thanks to you and the other officials uh, that are seated uh, around the table who are doing all the work. We, we actually do know that. Uh, it's great to have you with us today and uh, look forward to everyone's participation. Look, uh, since we last met in December, the con the, the, this group, broadly speaking, has continued work in a number of important ways, and that includes efforts to educate stakeholders around the country and in D.C. about why exports and trade are so important to the continued growth of the American economy. We've been challenged by uh, many members of the administration, uh, most notably Ambassador Froman, uh, to, keep, uh, to keep selling out there, and we're doing our best. Uh, I think uh, we also uh, undertook, uh, since we last met, uh, some important mid-term reviews of prior letters, uh, and we've worked closely with many of our executive branch partners to execute against that blueprint and to fine-tune it uh, and to update it where we needed to do that, and that's reflected in, in some of the letters here today. Uh, finally, uh, uh, we are very excited today uh, to have a panel on 21st century competitiveness, and I foreshadowed that when uh, introducing uh, Governor Nixon uh, and uh, Mayor Swearingen. Uh, uh, we'll also have uh, Governor Nikki Haley from South Carolina. Uh, we'll be joining the two of them, uh, and the perspectives of these leaders on the challenges, the opportunities, and the barriers they see at the local and regional level is an essential part of, uh, essential input, I should say, for the Council as we try to stay a step ahead of the, of the uh, competition uh, around the world. And I've always felt that the closer you get to the ground on this issue, uh, the more easy it is to understand why trade and exports are critically important. We'll also receive uh, updates on the economy from Director Zients and on the trade agenda from Secretary Pritzker. We have a really full agenda and some uh, substantive issues to discuss. Hey, look, um, this is my last uh, meeting as the uh, chairman of the Export Council, and I know all of you have had that on, on your calendar since I started five or six years ago. Uh, but I am looking forward to uh, continued service in other capacities, but it has been a privilege, and I say this to the uh, member, of, particularly the members of uh, the uh, President's team and to Penny, who's been a great partner here, uh, 
Uh, it's, been a pre it's been a pleasure to serve uh, the, and a privilege to serve the President as Chairman of this Council for the last number of years, and it's been an honor to work with many of you around this table. Uh, I just want to recognize the original renegades who, uh, I think five and a half years ago, there's still a number of us still here. Of course, Ursula, where's Ursula? Right here, who, he, who is, here's the world's worst secret, who is going to assume my position here very soon. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> Mary Adringa, Mary's Mary, she's from the very beginning. Dick Friedman of Carpenter and Company. Dick, I see you were here earlier. Gene Hale, partner in crime, probably has done more legwork than any PEC member. Uh, Bill Height, Bill, helmets and hard hats, and yep, yeah, there's Bill. Uh, Bob Iger, who could not be with us today, he called to offer his congratulations. Andrew Liveris, our our, our Greek, resident Greek, Australian American. Uh, and then Ra Raul Padreza. Where's Raul? He's right down there in his usual spot. And then, of course, Pat Wirtz. I think I picked up everybody. So thanks for your service and uh, the, the ongoing service. Uh, and, and quite frankly, the President has demonstrated a real commitment to this council. And I did a little history. Uh, historical analysis, I should say, uh, going back a number of years, and I will not name names, but let's put it this way. The, a president has rarely been as engaged in this council as President Obama was when you do the historical analysis. And you'd be sort of surprised, and again, I'm not going to name names, you'd be sort of surprised who's committed and who isn't. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> the Export Council is a uh, has been a great model of public-private partnership. Uh, and I think uh, Ursula led the trip to Turkey <laughs> last year and, and Poland. And I think uh, that, that sort of embodied, I think, uh, the power of that kind of partnership around, around the world. Uh, uh, so, and I would also remark uh, on the progress on small and medium-sized businesses we've made. I mean, it gets lost in the debate on TPA it gets lost on the debate, certainly in XM more than it should, but small and medium-sized businesses have made, uh, let's put it this way, we've, we've tried to put in place the kinds of policies that give those folks as much of a chance to succeed on a global stage as some of us with more natural advantages have. And so it's, uh, I think that's an important part of uh, the work and something that we're proud of. Uh, and, you know, the $2.34 trillion in goods and services uh, over the last, uh, last year, a record. Uh, I think we all feel good about that. And I think, again, back when you get on the ground and understand what that really means, what that really means is high-paying, uh, highly skilled, well-paid jobs uh, for families and for people uh, and for the communities that have supportive uh, services around them. So, there's more work to be done, and so there could not be a more natural transition in the world. Uh, my right arm, my left arm, now Ursula herself, uh, and so uh, we've worked side by side. So she will probably disown every policy I put in place, but that's <laughs> Ursula. But we share the same goal, we and do. Uh, and so it's going to be it's going to be fun. And uh, and Valerie, again, uh, let me just finish with thanking you for facilitating it all. And I think uh, you, you very nicely put everybody in positions to succeed, uh, including myself. And so I appreciate not only that partnership, but your friendship as we've gone through all this. So now, uh, with that said, I think uh, normal practice, uh, Valerie, would you, you. like to kick off the meeting? Thank you, Jim. Ursula, members of the President's Export Council, good morning. Uh, as Jim mentioned, we have a robust agenda. You are here at a pivotal time uh, in a national debate that we'll get into in a moment. But before we get into the substance of the meeting, I just wanted to say a few words about Jim. Uh, as he mentioned, he's stepping down after five years. And in public service, five years often feels like 35 years. Uh, but he has led this council through coming in at a time when our economy was still on the verge of collapse to seeing the progress that we've made over the last five years and the advice and the counsel that this council has given to the president has been inextricably linked to the progress that we've made. And Jim, your leadership here has had a direct impact on 
Thank the you. policies uh, that the president has adopted and has advocated. And it has led to the retention and creation of jobs here in America uh, and everything from growing the automobile industry to being as robust as it is to the hospitality industry and everything in between, small, medium, and large, have benefited from your leadership and the advice of this council. And so um, on behalf of the president, who just returned, as I think everyone knows, from the G7, having a very productive meeting and threw himself fully into his agenda of getting trade passed, uh, couldn't be with us this morning, but he asked me to express to you um, his appreciation for your service. You, uh, you have always been there for, not just for this council and the president, for, but for our country, and appreciating the fact that while you're running this extraordinary business, you have always made time for the people's business. And uh, on a personal note, there isn't a single time that I've called you or emailed you and asked for help where you have not been right there, and we just appreciate that service. Um, so to commemorate your service, there's a kind of an inside joke between oh. the President and Jim having to do with gold watches. <laughs> well, I don't have a gold watch for you, but I have what I think is like the next best thing. Perhaps you'll open this and show the group. <laughs> How about a round of applause for yeah, yeah. Well, you? This looks promising. <laughs> this looks promising. Oh, fantastic. Just to remind you that you were presidential cufflinks yeah. with oh, President Barack Obama's name. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. And even a more personal gift from the president to open at your leisure. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So, and as Jim also said, there could be nobody more capable than his left and right, I don't know which to call, both <laughs> hand than Ursula Burns, who has Pretty also cool. been here throughout yeah. and has provided advice and counsel and leadership and um, also, on a personal note, has done yeoman's work um, for the people of our country and the businesses of our country and helped make sure that our competitiveness stays second to none. So. I look forward to working with you in your new capacity, uh, but it will be a seamless transition beginning tomorrow. So please join me in welcoming our staff. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Valerie. That you was can't pass very anything. nice. I was going to. Okay. I was going to say Ursula. <laughs> yeah. um, I've had the benefit of sitting next to Jim and Jim doing most of the the heavy lifting as. As most of you know, and I come in as the um, relief pitcher whenever, whenever Jim needs specific help. He has an expression that I love, which is called, he said it earlier, hey, look, um, <laughs> which is his, his phrase for let's move along. <laughs> um, I just want to thank you as well. I want to add my thanks. I, we joined together, and when we spoke about this before, we actually both said yes. One of the key points that we talked about was we would do this together if we could make a difference. And I think that we have been able to make a difference under, under your leadership. Um, we have three trade agreements. Mm -hmm. and we're on the verge of TPA. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we have to get XM um, reauthorized. And you'll do that before tomorrow morning. I'm trying. Morning. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Fred, help. We have, we have midnight. You, you still have a couple of hours. I know. And, um, I will try to do as well as you. I will probably call you um, if I need some help. Of course. I just want to thank you from all my heart and for all of America and for business in general. Oh, that's thank very you for nice all you do. Yeah, You're a great guy. Thank you. I'm, I'm supposed to be businesslike after all this. Congressman Riker, good to have you here. The longest continuing a attending legislator on the PEC. It's good to have you here. Um, let's see, Secretary, Secretary Pritzker, do you have some words for us? Uh, thank you, thank you, Jim. And um, I too want to personally thank you for your service to our country. Um, you've been a fantastic leader of the PEC for the last uh, five plus years. And what all of us really appreciate is that you and your team have helped the council develop and prioritize recommendations and deliver specific actionable advice to all of us in the government. And that is a tall order. Uh, it sounds uh, easy, but it's very, a lot of people, a lot of coordination, a lot of conversation, but it's really helped guide us and we're very grateful for that. 
And Ursula, I want to congratulate you as the new chair. Um, I very much enjoyed leading the PEC trip with you to Poland and Turkey uh, last fall. I took particular delight in that our press conferences were all women. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, I think we fun. may have shocked a few in some of those countries, but uh, it was really, uh, I think we did, we held our own and then some. And I look forward to working closely with you um, to advance our trade and export goals. Uh, going forward. And to all of you on the PEC, um, uh, this council really plays, as Valerie said, an invaluable role in advising our country's international trade agenda. Do not underestimate how important your work is. Uh, your recommendations have contributed to many accomplishments uh, over the last several years, whether it's the three free trade agreements or we're on track to complete the international trade data system. Uh, or the fact that we are really pursuing and continue to pursue, pursue uh, meeting the visa processing goals at high demand posts around the world that you have set for us. And um, I have enormous confidence, and as you know, I stake myself out as the optimist in the group, uh, that will add securing trade promotion authority to that list, uh, which has been a PEC priority for many, many years. Um, U.S., just talking about our trade agreements, you know, U.S. companies and workers, as you know, we need these trade agreements to thrive in what is a, continues to be and will be a fiercely competitive global economy that our, all of you uh, operate in. And too often, as you know, U.S. companies lack access to the 96% of the world's customers that live outside of our borders. But foreign companies really have relatively easy access to our marketplace. And so addressing both the barriers and opening markets, but also, frankly, leveling the playing field. Uh, we, we use those phrases, but they really are uh, uh, real. And this is the central focus of the President's uh, trade agenda. And it's really to spur economic growth here at home, create jobs here at home, and make sure that our American workers are competing on a fair, with a fair set of rules around the world. And you know, we're very focused, as you know, uh, the entire administration, and you know, Jeff and Mike are, are uh, coordinate all of us uh, and, and our efforts but to get this done. And it's, I just will say from a personal standpoint, to be part of that team is something uh, I'm very proud of. And uh, it is, uh, we're all in as an administration to get this done, but we can't do it without you. And we are not over the finish line. So please, let's uh, not high five. We have got more work to do to get these to get not just trade promotion legislation done, but ultimately to get the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership uh, passed through Congress. So uh, more work to do. Uh, it feels like we've got momentum, but let's not, uh, let's not be too optimistic. Having said that, um, being the optimist and the planner at heart, uh, the Commerce Department is already working to lay the groundwork so that your businesses, your supply chains, and our nation's small and medium-sized businesses can capitalize on the hard work that uh, is uh, in negotiating new trade agreements, and particularly, let's say, TPP. Um, we recognize that it's our responsibility to help businesses take advantage of these new trade agreements. And so to that end, I want to remind you, we have 100 U.S. export assistance centers around the country. Their purpose is to help American businesses with every step of the export process. And our staff stands ready to introduce firms to overseas buyers and distributors, help them with counseling and advocacy, introduce them to financial institutions that might finance their trade. So we have resources available to support our businesses. And then, of course, we have our 175 commercial service professionals that are located just in the TPP countries. Uh, and in fact, we're doing a review to make sure we have enough resources in those countries. 
uh, so that, um, as I said, as an optimist, when TPP is passed, we're ready to provide American companies with the on-the-ground assistance that they'll seek to successfully navigate in those new markets. Um, just and as a precursor to all of this, since I took office, the department has led 11 trade missions to TPP regions. And personally, I've been to Japan, Vietnam, Mexico, Canada, Singapore, and Malaysia as uh, Secretary of Commerce. So we are really out there trying to lay the groundwork uh, because our job in the end is to bring these new trade agreements to life on your behalf and on behalf, frankly, of the American worker. Uh, so one of the things, just to remind you of some of the things that we are focused on, we're also working to upgrade our available market research on TPP countries, uh, enhancing our industry-specific expertise to ensure that companies have the data in your sector is available to compete. And we're also improving our existing tools and developing new applications. So. Uh, businesses can plan ahead and incorporate TPP into their export strategy. Uh, we will work to increase opportunities for U.S. companies to engage with potential buyers and partners in the TPP countries through trade shows and other events. Um, in addition to bringing the trade agreements to life, uh, one of the important responsibilities uh, at the Commerce Department that we, it's not solely in our purview, but uh, also with USTR is enforcing the trade rules. Um, our team is responsible for monitoring, investigating, and ensuring foreign governments are in compliance with our existing 250 trade agreements to which the United States is a party. And we'll work with exporters of all sizes to overcome barriers caused by foreign government policies that violate our trade agreement policies. So a lot at stake here, a lot of uh, potential opportunities. So thank you for all your support to date. Um, let me close by just, I have three asks of this group that I want to make sure that you're aware of. Um, the first is we want your input into how our department can best position U.S. companies to take advantage of new trade agreements. What information will you and your suppliers need most and in what format? Uh, and what tools and assistance do you need to capitalize on these new opportunities? So if you, through our processes, could let us know that, that would be great. The second is, on behalf of the administration, I would just want to make sure you're aware, our department recently accepted Germany's invitation to be the partner country for the next Hanover Messe. Uh, the largest industrial trade fair in the world. So I hope that your companies will attend the event. The Hanover Mesa is an opportunity for you to showcase your innovative, high-quality products and uh, to hundreds of thousands of attendees from around the world. That um, event is next April, and we will play, the United States will play a uh, particularly special role in that fair for uh, next year. Uh, third and uh, uh, the last uh, request is I know that many of you are manufacturers and I invite you to join us for Manufacturing Day on October 2nd. Uh, this is an effort to expose graduates and high school students to the innovative, inventive businesses that characterize today's manufacturing sector. The goal of the event is to address a PEC priority, which is improving the image of manufacturing. Last year, we had 400,000 attendees at over 1,600 events ar uh, around the country, but not in every state. This year, we aspire to have more than 2,000 events and to have events in all 50 states, and we encourage your companies uh, to participate. So please put Manufacturing Day, October 2nd, on your calendar. Um, and I know that you will put forward a number of recommendations today. I've read them. Unfortunately, I will not be able to spend the entire meeting with you. Uh, but my, you're in good hands. My Deputy Secretary, Bruce Andrews, will be here. So I look forward to um, receiving the readout of your recommendations. 
And let me close by just saying again, your recommendations, the PEC recommendations are critical in shaping our policies. Your persistence is essential to achieving the outcomes necessary for America to lead in our increasingly globalized economy. And I know that working together, we will not only uh, keep America open for more growth uh, and open for more progress, but also open for more business. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Penny. I, I can say from personal experience that the Commerce Department has, in my memory, never been more focused and active and steam in their stride than, than it is today. And I think your leadership has something to do with that, a lot to do with it. And I think Ursula and I were making a note on, I think there's something to be said for this information engagement, uh, the form in which some of this important information is presented and is required, you know, the, the next level of detail, I know you meant it that way. I think we gotta make that the, one of our initiatives to- We would really appreciate it. For the first time, yeah. we have a chief data officer. We have a, okay. um, an entire okay. effort at the Department of Commerce, across commerce, in, as it relates to data and trying to make our data more easily available, more digestible, more practical. So there's a, someone we can link Absolutely. in with on the ground. Absolutely, Absolutely. and uh, uh, I know Bruce Andrews, I think he's behind me. He's, he's around, yeah. There he is right behind me. He can put everyone in touch with Ian okay. Killian, who runs that effort for us. Thank you, Penny. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Uh, Jeff. Jim, I'm going to be very quick because I think a lot of the most important points have already been made. And thank you and, and Ursula for your leadership. Um, let me just do a very brief update on the economy. Coming off of what was a soft first quarter, uh, we believe driven uh, in large part by some transitory issues like the ports and weather, uh, we were pleased to see last Friday's jobs number, 280,000 jobs. That's now 12.6 million private sector jobs across 63 straight months, which is a record in terms of the streak. And unemployment has fallen from 10 percent down to 5.5 percent. Um, I don't need to spend much time on the importance of exports with this group. I feel like I'm not only preaching to the choir, I'm preaching to the preachers. Um, and you know, as Jim said, we last year hit an ex uh, a record. Uh, but the president, along with this group, uh, believes that increasing exports, even off of this high base, is critical to yep. our future. And when, when America bus American businesses and workers compete on a level playing field, we win. And that's what free trade agreements are all about, high standard free trade agreements. Um, we had a couple of weeks ago a good, strong bipartisan vote on TPA in the Senate. We expect action in the House uh, in the next several days. Um, as Penny said, uh, we've got to keep working uh, in that uh, I think we, we have a good, a good uh, case here and good prospects, but uh, it ain't over till it's over. And to that end, the President's been all in, fully committed. Uh, both publicly in events like Nike uh, a few weeks ago, uh, where he made the public case for trade, and spending a large chunk of his calendar in private phone conversations and meetings with members uh, and other key constituents. The, the cabinet has been, as Jim said, all out. Uh, I think there's been 165 visits by the cabinet and their senior teams to over 35 states across the last few months, and Secretary Fox, Pritzker, um, Tom Perez, uh, Secretary Vilsack has been critical on ag and in rural communities, and Carter and Kerry making the national security case for trade, and above all, uh, Ambassador Froman, who has just been everywhere uh, while at the same time negotiating the agreement. So thank you, Mike. Um, and all of you, your support has been critical in that um, members need to hear from you uh, and your employees and, P and companies in your supply chain and small businesses and getting that dialed up has been uh, important for people to understand the benefits of trade. Um, the, you'll hear more about TPA and TPP from Mike. So I want to go and close on a second very important topic for exports and competitiveness and that's the reauthorization of the XM Bank. Uh, the case here is Fred Hochberg, the president of the XM Bank, makes um, very, uh, is very compelling. Um, over the last six years, XM's supported 1.3 million jobs, private sector jobs. Um, it's been reauthorized 16 times um, by bipartisan 
uh, majorities uh, across 80 years. And most importantly, it doesn't cost taxpayers a cent. Uh, it actually uh, makes money. So uh, for all those reasons, uh, we are very engaged with Congress to get XM reauthorized and committed to getting this done. Uh, Leader McConnell promised to vote. Speaker Boehner uh, is supportive. Uh, we think that it will likely start in the Senate, uh, and we need to find a credible path to XM reauthorization. <coughs> Um, you'll, you'll hear more about that uh, from Fred in a few minutes. So a lot of progress, but a lot of opportunity ahead. And we've got uh, a couple key pieces of business to do across the next several weeks. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Pre appreciate your guidance and push on a lot of this stuff. And your, the coordination you bring to it, it's, it's not easy. Um, we have the letters now. And we have 30 minutes. So. We are always in this position, so we should be good at it at this stage. You can rely on the fact that these letters have been fairly well vetted. Uh, so uh, we will let Andrew, where's Andrew, be an example of the kind of brevity that we're looking for as he presents the first letter on the trade agenda. And I think there's maybe uh, another person or two that may want to make a quick comment after Andrew. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Jim, thank you for your leadership. Uh, personally enjoyed the four, five and a half years. Uh, and thank you, Ursula, for your continued leadership. Um, in the spirit of uh, direct instructions from the Chairman, which I'm quite accustomed to receiving, uh, we are going to be very brief, but the letters speak for themselves. Uh, we're the Global Competitiveness Subcommittee. We have three letters. The first is, of course, the seminal letter, which has been much spoke about by the leaders from President Obama's administration here, which is the uh, letter on leadership on trade. If you go through the letter, it really speaks to the difference between a free trade agreement and a fair trade agreement. And uh, the United States exporting high quality standards from protecting intellectual property, eliminating tariffs to facilitating customs, the need for strong uh, commitments on these issues, the elimination of a localization requirements, and really asking our negotiators on TPP and TTIP to put all this to play, and regulatory cooperation across borders. USTR is on top of it. Mike Froman's right on top of it. His team is. This is a letter that strongly supports that process. So I'll ask a couple of members of the committee to comment. Ginny Romatis first. Where's Ginny? Okay. And, uh, and Andrew, I, look, I'll just do the ditto on the congratulations and thank yous. But uh, <laughs> uh, I only want to call out the one particular chapter and in, in importance and how everyone listens so well to the part about inclusion about the modern digital economy, because that is now pervasive in both the TPA and TPP provisions that have been written there. And I think that was so critical, because as we speak of lots of natural resources, information is as much a natural resource with refinement and value that's going to go with it. So it has done, I think, a great job, and I salute the efforts of everyone of inclusion of that. And as I say, in TPA, it's on the, it's part of the negotiating provisions. And then in TTIP, it's strong provisions that are in there. But I would just call out one more that I don't think everyone has seen, but uh, and really attribute to both uh, Commerce and then USTR and uh, Ambassador Froman created something called the Digital Dozen, his team has created, which is a set of um, what I would call principles that really, that we couldn't, no one could have written them better, I think, that embrace what it means to have a really fair digital agenda out there. And we, I think, are the first country to have written such an inclusive list that is very clear and easy to understand. Things like keep a free and open internet, or things like you can't force a company, a company, to divulge something in order to participate. And so I think that that particular part, those rules are spot on, or you can't prohibit a company from you know trade if they don't turn over their intellectual property, as an example. I think they're very well written, and I think they set a role model. So I, I really commend the administration, Commerce, you know, USTR for what they've done. And I would only add, I was with Senator uh, Hatch yesterday, and he couldn't have been more complimentary about uh, this particular aspect in general and this particular aspect. And so I would just end by saying that I think this has been an outstanding example of uh, a pro public private partnership together, the government listening, and a set of provisions that help both small business and big business and trade in general. So. Thank Good. you, Ginny. Ursula, did you want to make comments? Uh, yes. I just, by the way, Ginny, very well said. I agree. The, the digital dozen is uh, very impactful, very well done. I'm, I'm impressed. Um, one part of um, this agenda as well is ITA. We have to be very, very careful and sure. <coughs> Thank goodness it has been added to the letter and to the trade agenda in general. It's not quite there yet. We have to keep pushing. We cannot forget. Um, and uh, my only, my only 
request is that we don't proceed without it included um, in, in any draft that go forward. So I think it's good. Thank you. And then I think Pat Woods, you wanted to make a couple of comments? Thank you. Let me just add a, uh, a couple. First, congratulations, Jim, Ursula. Uh, a couple of points to what's already been said. We have uh, agriculture always continues to be important in these trade issues, and particularly preventing delays um, with agricultural products coming in, as well as continue to uh, allow for greater exports. It's part of the, the, the whole scheme. I know we've all written op-eds on this topic of tr free trade, and I just want to continue to encourage my fellow members to do that, and not just in the major cities. We've gone to the smallest of communities, you know, in Lincoln, Nebraska, Clinton, Iowa, Decatur, Illinois, and so forth. Members, I think, appreciate that, but it also helps our employees uh, put their voice forward as well. So thank you for all that you've done, Mike. It's been, uh, it's been very much appreciated. Well, these, these letters, thanks, thanks Andrew and, and Ginny, Pat, and Ursula, uh, could not be more timely for reasons we know and understand. And as I think Jeff uh, suggested to us, now is not the time to let up. There is, uh, there is no home run trot in sight yet. Uh, did Congressman Kelly want to offer a word here? No, I, yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Really appreciate being uh, including this. You know, my background is an automobile dealer. And, and I think one of the things that we look at always was how do we maintain our base and then look at opportunities where we can gain market share. And certainly when we talk about 96% of the market being outside our borders, we want to protect what we have, but also we want to grow what's still out there for us and with products that get us there. Uh, Chairman uh, Hawkeye was in Erie, Pennsylvania, explaining it. I think it's very hard for people sometimes to understand XM. For me, it's been very easy. There's many times people would come into our dealership and say, I'll take delivery of the car if you can get me financed. And uh, so for me, it's very low. It's down at the very gra at the very level, uh, not so much uh, in the upper echelon of it, but on the black top where I deal with people every day and look for market opportunities and, and things that we can do to grow our economy, get it back on pace. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the work that you're all doing. I just wish the American public understood it a little bit better yep. uh, because they're in the dark in some of these things. I don't know how we debunk some of these uh, these ideas we have right now, Dan and I and, and uh, the sheriff sitting in a, in a Congress, it really doesn't always get what it is yeah. we're trying to get to. So I appreciate being involved and, and thank you for all your service. So, somehow I think you're going to fit in here. No. <laughs> Some, somehow I, th I think this is going to work. And, and if anybody needs anything for personal transportation, let me know. We'll try to solve that too. And before we get Ambassador Froman, I think just just very, I know you're on a tight uh, yeah. schedule, uh, Mr. Chairman. I I, I want to. Uh, to just uh, take a moment to give you a quick update. And it's great to have uh, Mike here uh, joining the team. But uh, uh, yesterday, the Ways and Means Committee dropped uh, the bills, TPA, TPP. And uh, maybe Mike was going was gonna to go into this. But uh, uh, preferences bill, we're on our way, customs bill. Good. And uh, the word we just got uh, as we were headed down here is that we are going to have a vote on Friday. Okay. So the mm. the... That's a good sign. The, uh, and, and by the way, I'm the, sp the sponsor of the TAA bill, and that's been a little bit of a ah, hiccup, but we've made uh, some progress yeah, there with the good. Senate. So uh, the, the emphasis on your efforts this week is absolutely critical. Your energy, I know I, I get a little frustrated uh, in talking to some of the folks that we're talking to. Uh, as Paul Ryan has said, in some cases, it's, maybe I shouldn't say this. Uh, it's like talking to a, you know, a piece of granite. It, the facts don't matter, but you cannot give up because we are swaying yeah. some of these people one at a time. So I appreciate the opportunity to to, uh, to just quickly update you on on uh, Congress's. Uh, hey, a report progress. from the battlefield. I mean, I know the work you're doing <laughs> there. I mean, it's uh, and and getting the vote on Friday for those of us that aren't uh, as engaged mm -hmm. with uh, deep knowledge of the process, but that is a good sign. I mean, that says somebody thinks someone's got some votes. That's what it says to me. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. It's great to have you here. Mike, uh, would you like to provide an administration response to all of this? <laughs> I agree. Uh, uh, let me, I'll speak very briefly. I and mean, let me sure. maybe start with the negotiations and where we are. And I think, yeah. uh, thank Ursula for bringing up ITA as well, because it is very much on our radar screen. We're near the end of that, but we have some tricky issues with a couple of countries. Uh, in fact, I'll start with Geneva. ITA, I think we can, uh, we're very close to. Our environmental goods agreement negotiation is actually going very well. It doesn't get a lot of attention, but we're working with other countries and developing a long list of products where we can eliminate tariffs on environmental friendly goods. 
and I'm optimistic that that's making good progress. Our services negotiation, also making good progress in Geneva. And for the first time, uh, really uh, in, in many years, we're having an open and honest discussion about uh, where Doha could land and how to bring Doha to a close, mm. building on the success of Bali and what we hope will be the implementation of the trade facilitation agreement this year. Mm. So we, the, our approach of, of trying to create momentum through TPP and TTIP that can then spill over and create momentum at the multilateral level as well uh, seems to be working. And uh, we've got ways to go on all these issues, but we're seeing very good progress and, and a more honest discussion than we've seen in a, in a very long time. Um, I'll do TTIP and then TPP. TTIP, um, I was just in Berlin a week or so ago. Um, there's a lot of work still to be done there, but the Europeans, and I think at the G7, the readout we received is that Europeans are very much interested in moving ahead and we're encouraging them to turn that high level political support they have for TTIP into progress at the negotiating table and encouraging them also to engage their publics and their stakeholders uh, in a way to help address some of the, the, the issues that have been raised there. Uh, as we've been doing in this country really for the last 20 plus years. Ever since NAFTA, we've had a robust debate around trade in this country. We've benefited from that and uh, they're, they're now engaging in that. Finally, on TPP, we've just completed uh, uh, a two-week session in Guam of among our chief negotiators uh, where they made a lot of progress, but we're down to what we knew would come at the end, which are the very, um, a, a small number of very difficult issues. And I will tell you, and it's been very clear, uh, 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 none of the other countries are willing to come to the table, uh, have another meeting, and put their final offers on the table until they see us having CPA. Yeah. And they have made that clear. And you can understand why. Sure. All of these final issues require very difficult political decisions in their own systems, and they're only willing to do that if they feel like uh, we've got the, the political support here to, to move this forward. So the, the, the news that Congressman Riker just reported is, is, is timely. Um, and, uh, um, and I will say um, the, the efforts that the uh, business community and others are putting forward and the mayors and governors and others are putting forward to, to support this is very helpful. Um, uh, we're at a, a critical time there. And when we get past TPA, um, we'll need something similar for TPP down the road. Uh, it may not be uh, the same intensity for, for six months, but that too will be a big debate. Final thing I would say is we've benefited enormously. We at USTR benefited enormously from the input of this group and groups like this and having uh, business and labor and members of Congress and state and local officials has been absolutely critical to making us better negotiators, helping us refine our positions. And we view this as a critical part of our, of our job in terms of engagement with, uh, with a, a wide range of, of stakeholder points of view. So thank you for all the time that you put into these letters uh, and, and, and the, other, uh, the other activities that you undertake throughout the year. My, Mike, you're, 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 you're undertaking the most ambitious trade agenda in history. And that's a true statement. And you might just pull it off. And we're gonna, and we're gonna, we're gonna keep supporting you. We're gonna keep supporting you, Senator Klobuchar. Welcome. It's uh, good to have you here with us today. Well, thank you. Yeah. I understand it's your last meeting. Thank yeah, you for your uh, you. leadership. And I think right now, with the Senate having passed TPA, uh, we've moved on to being concerned about the infrastructure bill and getting that done. Um, and looking at if there's any way we could do a longer haul bill, which we would really like, and supporting many of us, the President's proposal, Jeff, um, on uh, some international tax reform, um, in part as a, we could tie that into infrastructure. The Exxon Bank uh, is really our number one focus, those of us working on these issues and seeing if there's any way we could either attach it to, because I think it'll pass the Senate and has easily, um, uh, either attach it to the transportation bill or attach it to um, even the um, customs bill that's off on its own from the uh, at TPA, just something that would give us a vehicle uh, yeah. to get Exum done. We're really concerned about that. I headed up a press conference last week with Maria and Heidi um, from the leadership, and we were really trying to get that done. Um, and then the third thing I just wanted to thank everyone for is their work on uh, apprenticeships. So I was just home all a uh, few weeks ago, and I, I could not believe we are having huge problems. We have such low unemployment in Minnesota in the manufacturing area. Um, and so anything we can do, I just talked to Patty about the um, K through 12 bill, if there's anything more we can do to try to encourage more with apprenticeships, and I appreciate the letter you're doing on that. So thank you, and congratulations yeah, yeah. to Ursula thank as well. You. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Good to have you here. Uh, 
Kathy Navelli, did you want to make a comment here at this juncture? Just uh, I'll under just very, Secretary of State. Yes, sorry. Thank you, and uh, thank you both for your leadership, uh, and to everybody here for their leadership. And, and really, what I wanted to say is that, in addition to all of the economic benefits, which Mike has outlined and you've all outlined <clears throat> for the trade agenda and the trade agreements, it's also inextricably tied with U.S. leadership. Uh, more broadly and with our strategic objectives uh, to stay engaged, to stay engaged in the Asia Pacific in particular, but also with Europe. And so you all are actually fantastic ambassadors. Obviously, we have ambassadors in every country who are fighting for, for you all and for, for what you're trying to achieve. Um, but you are also, um, by your own example, by your honesty, by your provision of jobs, um, and are, are providing uh, a window into American exceptionalism and what can be happening. And so we're very happy that we're able to work together to support these things. Um, I just returned from Europe where I was engaging with the Commission on the European Single digital uh, market and that they are that they are working on and so it's great that we have these principles to rely upon I think that's going to help us cabin that in and um, so we really want to be very actively engaged in places um, not just where we have trade agreements under discussion but even more broadly um, on issues like supply chain etc um, and we look forward to working with you on all of that great yeah thank you for your comments and thanks for your support here uh, second letter, uh, U.S.-China bit, yes, uh, bilateral um, investment treaty. Thank you. Also, our subcommittee, um, again, in the spirit of ambition and Mike Froman's overachievement, uh, which we're foreshadowing, uh, we, um, a bit with China becomes the seminal trade agreement uh, through TPP, through TTIP. We all understand how difficult this one's going to be. We all understand how necessary it is and how vital uh, the two economies have to uh, approach each other's economic dialogue. As part of the strategic and economic dialogue coming up, uh, it's very necessary that we keep pressing the Chinese. And this letter speaks to uh, various topics that the USTR is working on. Uh, this letter really has a lot of support from uh, our subcommittee. I'd like Pat Wirtz to comment, and then Jim, you can ask anyone else to comment. Okay, thanks, thanks, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I would like to also support the letter, and in particular on a subject of agriculture, you won't be surprised. Um, we were pleased as the negotiations have been proceeding to see that uh, foreign investment in selected agricultural processing uh, was removed from the new negative list for four uh, key zones, key, uh, new free trade zones in uh, Guangdong, Shanghai, Xinjiang, and Fujian. And that is something we'll monitor and watch, and we'd be interested to see how long the pilot's duration would be, uh, what's next on the agenda, and certainly how they'll measure success. So we'll watch some of that quite closely and would encourage, again, like the uh, letter says, uh, continue to push. Thank you. Mike, uh, do you have a comment uh, just, here? Just uh, very briefly, Thanks, uh, um, this we have been negotiating this for about a year and a half, and we've made uh, quite good progress on the base text of, of, the, of the agreement. But uh, the key issues, I think, this year will be the negative list and holding China to a high standard to make sure that what they do through this does actually lead to the opening and the reform of their economy. Our main yep. purpose in doing this is to help encourage that kind of uh, reform. Um, and we'll need to deal with some other issues that are China-specific in this context, like their SOEs and things of that sort. And state, uh, the State Department uh, co-chairs this with us, and I think we're pleased with the progress we've made to date, but we, we still have a long way to go, and we appreciate your support for a high standard agreement. Does, uh, Mike, just a quick question. Does, does progress and momentum on TPA and TPP, does that have the byproduct of helping you with BIT as no, the that's a very good question. To, I, I yeah. think it does, and, and you all, of course, uh, uh, spend time in China, many of you do, and have meetings with leadership there. Certainly the messages we're getting from yeah. leadership is that they're following uh, our trade debate and uh, TPP in particular very closely. They know it will have an effect on raising standards across the region that they're going to have to, yeah. to compete with, and, and the bid is certainly uh, one mechanism for articulating the kind of reforms that they need to do in order to, to achieve that. That's a good thing. Kathy, do you have a comment there, quickly? Just very quickly, yeah. um, obviously the negative list is a seed change in the way China looks at doing things. Um, yeah. Before it was you had to have express permission. Uh, now it's everything's allowed unless it's 
prohibited, and you see that in the free trade zones, and we'll see it in a bit. And we've been pushing very hard um, together with Mike to make sure that we're not just cataloging existing uh, restrictions in China, but to actually change uh, change things so that there's a more open environment. Thank you. And before turning to Marcia Lego from Treasury, I'd just like to acknowledge that Governor Haley arrived, who we acknowledged earlier today. Welcome, Nikki. Good to have good to have you here. Yeah, it's good to have you here. Um, Maria, are are you here? Hi, yeah, there, this there is there Marisa. Yeah. Um, the Sorry, timing of this meeting is propitious because it is on the eve of the annual strategic and economic dialogue that we have with China, and that is the premier forum for pushing China to deliver concrete changes. Um, the reason we place so much emphasis is that this is a process that has worked. We within the U.S. government are used to operating across all different agencies, not as common in China. Mm -hmm. And so the SNED is an, um, the Strategic and Economic Dialogue is an opportunity to get all of the Chinese government together to make economic progress. This year, we're placing particularly high emphasis, and the Chinese are as well on the SNED. Why? Because it is a lead-in to Chinese President Xi's visit to the U.S. in September. And the deliverables that we're looking for reflect how complex and how rich our economic engagement with China is. And I thought I would list just the top five things. One is promoting global macroeconomic rebalancing. That is what the G7, the G20 is all about. The second is obtaining market access for U.S. technological innovations in China. The third leveling the playing field for competition in China, improving their regulatory standards, and especially the transparency of their regulatory standards. Fourth, liberalizing investment, increasing the ability for U.S. companies to invest in China without restrictions. And then finally, an addition that just grew out of President Obama and President Xi's agreement on climate earlier this year, we are going to engage quite heavily on cooperation on climate finance and clean energy. Thank you. Terrific. I appreciate those comments. Uh, you know, other than ordering a whole bunch of airplanes, I can't think of anything I'd rather have uh, President Xi do when he's here in October. <laughs> than, uh, um, Vanessa, did you have a comment here? Where, I saw her earlier today. Uh, oh, Jeff, sorry. No, okay, fair enough. Uh, listen, uh, uh, excuse me, I think, Vanessa, you're going to introduce the, the next letter. Yeah. You're going to, sorry, sorry. Yeah. That's okay, Mr. Chairman. We built, uh, built a hierarchy here that I'm where, unaware of. Where, yeah, I mean, and uh, so I'm going to introduce Vanessa, but I mean, uh, the, the key is green buildings. I think is the, the problem the, is Andrew here. The, <laughs> no. the Greek. I've worked. Just <laughs> Green here, the <laughs> Greek. We, we uh, the, the subcommittee has also worked yeah. on green buildings. That's the yeah. third letter. Uh, it really marries Ambassador Furman's and the comments we've just heard vis-a-vis uh, -vis the SNED and how exporting technologies and services. Uh, green technologies, green services fits the U.S. agenda so perfectly, and so we've put a letter together on green buildings, and Vanessa, please comment. Thank Great. you. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you, Andrew. Andrew. Thank you. Um, just to elaborate a little bit more on this green building standards um, and shed light not just on the large companies like Dow that are looking at this marketplace, but smaller companies like us. We really have an opportunity to revolutionize the way that the global green infrastructure is looked at by setting these green global standards, which will allow us to innovate these products and export them. As a small business in this green building world, these green, infra green infrastructure products are needle movers and game changers for companies like ours. They not only uh, green roofs, but low flush toilets, energy efficient windows, solar. There are many green building products that can fit these infrastructure projects. And we've got these great products because of green building standards like USGBC, which we have to meet here. And it's allowed us to innovate and build amazing places for people like us to live and work. But in this letter, we highlight that around the world, those same green building standards don't exist. And it puts us at a disadvantage because, for example, in a green roof here, we might have to manage water and reduce energy. But a green roof in maybe Asia might be meaning, this is extreme, but spray painting the roof green. So we not only can't compete yeah, yeah. from a price yeah, perspective, uh, but it's actually not performing in managing water, reducing air pollution, waste, and all of that. We've suffered in the past from a U.S. building products um, in China, for example. The Europeans came in and built fire codes around building standards, 
and it allowed the European companies to compete more competitively than the U.S. companies. We don't want to see that in the green building world. We have been fortunate to innovate and develop some of the best products in the world. So therefore, in our letter, um, we really want to push for green infrastructure and performance-based standards. <clears throat> the green movement is spreading throughout the world to build healthier places for all of us to live and work. The Pope is even talking about it for governments around the world to wake up and lead in this area. Therefore, in this letter, we are challenging the administration and the whole of government to grab the reins and lead the way for the global green building standards, to ensure we move the needle for our large companies, but to also ensure that for the small businesses and the entrepreneurs, we can continue to innovate and export in this growing green building market. Thank you. Vanessa, very well articulated and appreciated very much. Uh, Bruce, did you want to weigh in quickly here? Yeah. First of all, yeah. I want to thank you for the uh, recommendations on this important issue. Um, you know, the, U the U.S. standard system really empowers the private sector to bring together the technical expertise needed to develop the consensus solutions that are both globally relevant. In areas where technologies are developing quickly, like this area, um, this is a highly effective way to make sure that we have practical, implementable solutions that bring clarity to transactions both between buyers and sellers. Um, you know, globally, the standards and conformity assessments can make or break market access for our companies. And I think, Vanessa, you made reference to the fact of, of how important it is to have our standards be uh, globally relevant and lead the way. Um, that's why the Commerce Department were committed to making sure that our trading partners are upholding the commitments that they make. Um, the existing commitments on standards included in the World Trade Organization technical barriers to trade agreement and other U.S. trade agreements. Recognizing the importance of buildings and green construction of the environment, we've actively engaged our trading partners in APEC and ASEAN, the Gulf Cooperation Council, on best practices for developing standards for green buildings and green building codes to enforce those standards. Um, these efforts, including de developing standards through open and transparent processes to ensure that we have wide spread participation by stakeholders, large and small, to develop consensus solutions with the highest technical merit. We encourage the PEC members to, to participate in future infrastructure trade missions that we plan to do as well, including on uh, clean energy, and we welcome the Council's views on the ways we can better inform and empower our exporters in this space. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Uh, Andrew? Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs>